For my entire life, I've always wanted to build the biggest Ninjago army of all time. But the issue is, I have literally five minifigures. So naturally, I hopped onto eBay and rinsed my life savings to buy all of these LEGO sets and minifigures here. Which is quite a lot. I want this army to be the most powerful LEGO army of all time. So powerful, in fact, that it would be capable of taking out just about any threat that it faced. Whilst including the most iconic sets and minifigures from across Ninjago's past. But in order to build this thing up, we need to start with phase one. The bear. So, so the army I want to start with is the Skeleton Army. You know, they're a classic one from like over 12 years ago. But of course, you know, I'm going to need some skeleton minifigures. And don't you worry, I got plenty. With the insane amount of packages I bought, I now had over 30 skeleton minifigures, which would play a vital role in forming this army. According to Wikipedia, these things are known for their indestructibility and not needing to eat or sleep, which makes them the perfect candidates to base this entire army around. I mean, you've got all sorts of different types types of skeletons, like, um, these guys who look awfully familiar, um, anyways. I think what I really need to do now is just go ahead and try and, you know, build some vehicles, which, hmm, if only, if only I had some, hmm. Which was lucky, because then this set magically started building itself, which was crazy, which would help support these indestructible soldiers, and included a play feature where we can squash any enemies who dare to challenge us. On top of that, there was also the Skull Turbo Shredder, a larger car-like build, which I used Dark Magic to build up. Oh, <laughs> And honestly, it was really cool because as it drives, the mouth literally opens up, which would be ideal for taking any enemies out. And was a great addition to phase one of the army. Now, I think the skeleton army at the moment is looking pretty good, but I think there's just one more thing that I really need. A truck, which LEGO actually released over 12 years ago as the Skull Truck. I mean, this is one of the oldest Ninjago sets of all time, and literally even has a sneak peek to what will come next in this army, as well as loads of nostalgic Ninjago content. But building this thing up was not easy, because all of the pieces weren't in bags, so it took me around three hours to build it, which left us with a hugely imposing truck with a missile hand that could be used to take out enemies long range, or even just eat them using the suspension due to the sheer size of this thing. And now with phase one of this army basically done, including every single skeleton vehicle and now having a leader, it was time to introduce phase two of the army, the bite. Alright, so currently this is what my serpentine army looks like, which isn't going to be enough. The serpentine would be vital for phase two of this plan because they have the ability to transform vehicles and people into snakes. Fighting Darth Vader? Well, he's a snake now, so it's fine. Not to mention their extreme loyalty, which would make them a hugely powerful asset to have in this army. So I decided to go ahead and get these two boxes here and let me just show you what's in these. First up, the Rattlecopter. And then, you know, nothing crazy, just every single Serpentine vehicle. Yes! Dude, this, this is going to be so sick. This is going to be insane. Oh my god. Having these vehicles would allow us to take the Serpentine wherever they needed to be, like behind enemy lines to infect the opposition. Starting off with the Rattlecopter, which came out all the way back in 2012. It would not only help to build up the army a little bit, but also provide air support with these bombs that literally drop snakes to infect people. I mean, these things are just so overpowered. Alright, this other bag now. See, old Ninjago sets like this one here, for example, can be extremely expensive to buy nowadays on eBay. But somehow I found a listing of this bad boy, as well as two other sets for only $50. I, I can't believe I did that. Wow. I started off by fixing up the vampire truck, which had this huge tail that would be very useful for taking out the trash. And started off phase two of this army very well, because this thing is absolutely Massive. On top of that, there was also the bite cycle, which seemed to have a missing tail, which is, is kind of strange, but I'm sure it's nothing, right? As well as yet another rattlecopter, which is great because I remember losing this thing in a restaurant when I was seven years old, and it, it was very traumatic. I also added the Fangpire Wrecking Ball to the army, which I got like two years ago for five pounds on eBay, which is still one of the wildest deals I've ever found. And then roughly set up the army, which had some weird looking snakes, but the army was beginning to look a bit overcrowded, so I bought myself 12 fake Lego base plates because they're so much cheaper than the real ones. And while I waited for them to arrive, I went through my collection to see what else I could find. I think basically what I'm gonna do is try and go through all these boxes and see, like, what I can find. I managed to salvage the Fangpire mech, and after the base plates arriving and putting them all down for the army to go on, phase two of the army was done. And the army was coming together very nicely by this point. But at the moment, I think it could definitely use a, um, a bit of scaling up. Now it was time for phase three, the bedrock. Box time. First box, let's see what we've got, shall we? What is this? I have no idea what this is. 
I'm, I'm kidding, I, I, I know exactly what this is, I ordered it. <laughs> I wanted to add what is quite possibly the most powerful army from all of Ninjago, the Stone Warriors. If you don't know, these guys are essentially the most overpowered characters from the show because they're made out of an indestructible material. Alright, so this is the Stone Army at the moment, not great. So I did in fact go and buy a couple more of these guys, very nice. As well as of course the set which I bought, which was the Garmatron. A vehicle capable of shooting this sludge that can turn anything it touches evil. And something that could definitely take this army to the next level because in the show it is ridiculous. So naturally I began building this thing which came out over 10 years ago and was just so cool to have. It came with two more stone warriors as well as a prison cell, a tank like build and Zane who I used as target practice for this thing. It wasn't too effective. So I wanted to add a giant stone warrior who is undoubtedly like one of the strongest soldiers in this army due to not only his sheer size but also indestructible swords which complete phase 3 of this army and takes us on to phase 4, the henchmen. Probably one of my favourite armies in Ninjago has to be Chen's army. Probably one of my bigger armies in my collection but you know this wasn't going to cut it and if I wanted the army to be as powerful as possible I'd need to hop on eBay again and get a few more sets here which started out with the Anacondrite Crusher, which was insanely fun to build and included more soldiers alongside an insanely intimidating vehicle and a, and a little catapult. So naturally I went ahead and bought another one to go alongside it. Look at this, we're going to be unstoppable. As well as of course, this last set here, which is the Anacondroid Helicopter Attack. These sets I've like always wanted, so it's sick. Aerial support was going to be vital in this army and putting this thing together, it was clear why it would be so important. I mean, not only did it look super cool, it could also shoot out a net to catch any enemies, which would be insane. Then I also threw in two more little turrets from the worst Ninjago set of all time, and was left with an absolutely insane Ninjago army. But I had no way of fitting all these sets on. So what I'm going to go ahead and try and do is just sort all of this stuff out. I've got some of these. They're, they're transparent pieces. I started with organising the vehicles and putting them into place, like the helicopters flying, for example, which looked very cool. Then, of course, was time to place the minifigures around the army, which was a very time-consuming process that left me with something just absolutely insane. This absolutely massive Ninjago army that seven-year-old me would not believe, including the skeletons at the back line of the army with all their vehicles and super durable soldiers, followed by the insanely huge serpentine portion featuring helicopters, mechs, land vehicles, and tons of soldiers who are all behind the Garmatron, which is protected by an array of Anaconda warriors, as well as various different vehicles and helicopters supporting the front line of stone warriors. I mean, this army is absolutely insane. Wait, wait, hang on a sec. Why is there these massive holes in the army? That's kind of weird. You have done well, my ninja. And now, with our knowledge, we shall be able to destroy his army and stop him from overtaking us once and for all. <laughs>